Before I start out, I made this when I saw that Potential History seemingly wasn't going to make an episode of History and Girls on Panzer for Girls on Panzer Der Film, so I decided to make one myself. If for some reason he is making one of these and sees mine as a copy, I will take this one down immediately. All credit for the idea goes to him. Also, watch his series first, it gives a lot of context. Now, without further ado, into the video. Where we last left off, Miho is probably thinking, Congratulations. You played yourself. Then, just as all hope seems lost, the German team shows up and says they've transferred to Ori for the match. We also get a shot of their tanks. Their lead tank, commanded by Miho's sister, Maho Nishizumi, is a Tiger I. Developed in 1937 and used from 1942 to 1945, the Tiger I was one of the most iconic tanks in history. Its 88mm gun could slice through any tank the Allies had until the end of the war, and its 100mm frontal armor could stop most conventional tank rounds. Its only major problem was its frequent breakdowns, and that only about 1,300 were made. Then, in 1941, plans were drawn up for an even bigger tank, and the next one on Kora Morimine's team, the Tiger II. Also known as the Tiger B, or Quang's Tiger, this tank was in use from 1944 to 1945, and was the most powerful German tank in production at the time. Its 120mm of sloped frontal armor was never penetrated by any Allied shell in combat, and with its 88 high-velocity L-71 gun, it was almost invincible on a one-on-one -on -one tank combat. But, even more Tiger II's broke down on the battlefield than Tiger I's, making it just another German invention that was used too far ahead of its time. The last tanks on the German team are two Panther Gs. Drawn up in 1941, the Panther was arguably the best mass-produced tank of World War II, as its high-velocity 75mm gun could knock out almost any Allied tank at normal battle ranges. Its front could stop most 75-76mm to 76 millimeter guns found on most Allied tanks at the time. Then, we see America's team, or Saunders High's tanks. They have two Shermans and a Sherman Firefly. The medium M4 Sherman was drawn up in 1939 and was America's armored backbone throughout World War II. When it was first used, it could knock out most German tanks it faced and was pretty good at infantry support. Then, when later German models such as the Tiger and Panther began appearing on the battlefield, the Firefly conversion was thought up by the British and it added a 17-pounder gun and a slightly modified turret, and it was able to cut through most of the frontal armor of German tanks it faced. Then, we see Pravda's tanks show up. They are two T-34E5s commanded by Katusha and Clara, an IS-2 commanded by Nona, and a KV-2. Then, the British tanks from St. Gloriana show up. They have a Churchill 7 commanded by Darjeeling, a Crusader commanded by Rose Ship, and a Matilda 2. Then, the Italian team, Anzio, shows up for the match. They are commanded by Deuce Anchovy, and are in a Carl Veloce 33 tankette. Drawn up in 1930, the CV-33 was the backbone of Italy's interwar armored force. This tankette was small, fitted a crew of two, and was armed with two 8mm Breda machine guns. It was exported around the world in the 1920s, but as World War II rolled around, it was shown that this tank's speed could not compensate for its lack of ability to fight other tanks or support troops. Because of this, it was phased out in 1941. Next, we see the Finnish team, Yakasota, commanded by Mika in the BT-42. Drawn up in 1941, this tank sought to help Finland's tank problem by taking captured BT-5s and putting British 115mm howitzers on them. This tank, though effective against lightly armored targets and pillboxes, was useless against T-34s. In order to solve this, German heat shells with more than enough penetration to shred a T-34 were sent to Finland. But, when used in combat, the shell's fuses were defective, and in one instance a BT-42 closed a point-blank range on a T-34 and shot it 18 times, but did nothing more than scratch it. Because of this, Finland stopped using BT-42s in favor of using captured T-34s and Panzer IVs from Germany. Finally, Chihatan shows up. After bringing too many tanks, they end up bringing five Chihas, two new and three old, and one Hago. Then, for some reason, Alice accepts the challenge and we finally get a fair fight. They go into a tent to name their operation, which is next to a quadricycle with a Maxim machine gun on it. After some naming problems on what the plan should be to capture a large hill in the middle of the battlefield, some picks being... Then, Miho somehow picks a worse name than what has been listed before. Also, this face. They split into three teams. Morning Glory and Dandelion cover the hill's flanks, and Sunflower moves to take the hill. On the other side of the hill, the University team sets up their plan to pin down one side and push through the hill on the other side. As the shot zooms out, we get to see their tank fleet made up of mostly M26 Pershings. Brought into need in 1944 after the Battle of the Bulge, the M26 Pershing was first used in the closing weeks of World War II, then later in Korea and Vietnam. Though a powerful medium tank with a 90mm gun, it was soon replaced by early Patton variants. They also field some M24 Chaffees. Designed in 1943 to replace 
aging Stewart tanks. The, the M24 Chaffee was built as a scout tank, but was also made to have the punch to be able to knock out enemy tanks. Its 75mm gun was effective against Panzer IVs, but when used in Korea, it was lackluster against T-3045s used by the North Koreans. Because of this, this tank was withdrawn from frontline service. Finally, Alice drives a Centurion Mark I. Developed in 1943 and put into service during the last days of World War II, but never seeing action then, the Centurion was an overall amazing medium tank, exported to many countries and still in use today in some. Albeit an upgrade in variants. It made its major debut as the Shawot variant in the Six Day War and was hailed as the first real main battle tank along with the M46 Patton and the T54. Also, I'll keep a counter of how many tanks are left on each team in the corner of the screen. After securing the hill, Morning Glory and Dandelion come under fire, and Chi Hatan's tanks and Morning Glory decide to try to stop the breakthrough by charging. It goes about as well as expected, with one new and one old Type 97 getting knocked out in seconds. K orders the remaining tanks to give chase. But, as one M4A5 goes over the hill, it gets hit with the brunt of the university's tanks on that flank. It then, in a couple seconds, bounces 12 90mm round and one 75mm round, which it really just shouldn't have. Then, Sunflower takes the hill and turns to give support fire. But, just as they are about to open fire, what seems like a bomb lands on the hill. Shortly after, as Miho is still trying to find out what hit them, another shell rains down and knocks out both Panthers. Sunflower tries to get off the hill, but the Russians are split up against the mountain pass by their main group by more attacking Pershings. As the Pershings focus on Katusha's tank, Clara, the KV-2, and Nona all sacrifice themselves for Katusha in probably one of the saddest sacrifice scenes where someone doesn't actually die. Also, I guess tanks have health bars? Then they realize that the shells from the sky are those of a Carl siege mortar, and send the CV-33, Type 89, Hetzer, and BT-42 to take it out. The Carl was designed in 1940 to help break through the Maginot Line, but was only used later in the war. With a 600mm gun, it could destroy almost any building with one shot. At the end of the war, all were destroyed except for one. This new squad of tanks, now dubbed Acorn Platoon, slips through the enemy lines, but finds that there are three Pershings guarding the Carl, so they make a plan to take it out and distract the Pershings. The BT-42 does some fancy driving, and though it loses its tracks and has to use its Christie suspension road wheels, it knocks out all three Pershings while in the process getting knocked out itself. While this is happening, the Carl fires at the Hetzer and the CV-33, which is on top of the Type 89. The shell misses and knocks down the back of the bridge, and the Type 89 launches the CV-33 at the Carl. But the 8mm MGs don't do too much to it, and the CV-33 falls and lands upside down. Then the Hetzer uses the CV-33 as a ramp and knocks out the Carl. Miho then decides to try to take her depleted forces into a town and hopefully split up the Pershings and get the advantage. The CV-33 goes up a roller coaster to spot, and it sees the main force coming through the southern gate. They send most of their tanks there to intercept, but it turns out that's just a few tanks that are putting up smoke screens and firing sporadically. Deuce realizes the trick, and Miho alerts the other two teams, Nishis and Darjeelings, of the attack. Then Nishis' team decides not to charge the Pershings when they see them. Shortly afterwards, a T-28 with the real main force comes through another gate. Designed in 1943 with many different variants prototyped, the T-28 was America's most powerful tank built in World War II, though it was never used. Its name started as T-28 Super Heavy Tank, and about halfway through its development, when another set of tracks were added on, its name was changed to T-95 Gun Motor Carriage, as it was to be used to attack the Siegfried Line. Then, with a few more modifications, its name was changed one last time to the T-28 Super Heavy Tank, but by then the Siegfried Line had already fallen and there was no use for it. As more forces are moved to fight the T-28, the smoke clears on the diversion team to the south, and Erica does some drifting in a Tiger II and they knock out almost the whole diversion force. Meanwhile, on the other flank, four Pershings move into flank Miho, but one gets knocked out when the Japanese team ambushes it. On the main flank, at the cost of a few tanks, Alice's team sets a trap and almost all of Miho's team gets crowded into a large amphitheater. Then, the M3 Lee, who had gotten split up from the rest of the group, shoots down the Ferris wheel, which gives the team a big enough chance to escape. After their escape, they split up into a few teams and pull into towns, which negates the Pershing's advantage at long range. They then go on a killing spree in which they knock out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight Pershings using a major amount of strategies without losing one of their own. Then, the duck group fights some Pershings inside of a Land Cruiser P-2000 Rat. Later, while chasing Miho's Panzer IV through a maze, Rumi, one of the three major Pershing commanders, notices that there is a CV-33 pointing out their location on rails. She sends some chaffies after it and results in one of the most crazy chase scenes in the show.
Just when it seems to be over for the CV33, the Lee knocks both Chaffees out. Then, the Lee is promptly knocked out by Alice's Centurion 1. Then, Alice engages the Duck Team and Nishi's team and turns the tide of the battle in an instant. The rest of the battle begins to fall out of favor for Mio's team, with the Stug getting knocked out as well. Darjeeling's Churchill knocks out the T-28, but in turn gets knocked out seconds later. As Alice's team gets its stuff together, the three main Pershings commanded by Rumi, Megami, and Azumi engage the three main US tanks commanded by K. This is what happens next. Then the Hetter gets knocked out by a Centurion, shortly followed by the Chinu. Shortly after, Rose Ship dueling the last Chaffee removes the speed limiter on her Crusader, enabling it to get in front of the Chaffee and jump the bridge and destroy it, though at the cost of her tank. Mio and Mahos head to the Central Plaza and give orders to Erika to stop the three Pershings at all costs. After a short skirmish, the Tiger P, the Katusha's T3045, and Matilda 2 get knocked out, as well as Erika's Tiger 2, though she is able to knock out Rumi's tank. Then, after knocking out the last Pershing and defying gravity, the CV-33 and the Sharby-1 get knocked out. For the final showdown, Alice and two Pershings fight Miho's Panzer IV and Maho's Tiger I. After destroying both Pershings, Alice goes into god mode and Miho and Maho are only saved by 3mm space armor being able to absorb 17 pound shells. <laughs> Then, after being saved by a teddy bear, Miho creates a final plan. After being hit by a blank, the Panzer IV rams and destroys Alice's Centurion, thus ending the match in favor of Miho's team. After getting congratulated by everyone, the school doesn't close down and Alice gives back the bear from earlier as a token for Miho winning. As the movie ends, it has a really good credit scene, so thanks for watching this video, and I will end it on the credit scene. Enjoy!